I don't even know what number we're at. We're here. Four. <laughs> it's number four. That is not live because it just wasn't working. But yeah. Well, it doesn't matter. It wasn't live. People might have tuned in. Where's 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 the? It's well, I wouldn't know because I. Standards? I don't know. It's just like I don't. I don't know. Never mind. Next. I also we'll am planning to put all the videos on Facebook, which I, I haven't done that either yet. Uh, okay. Well, we'll figure it out for next week. That's okay. There's something different when it's live. It <laughs> is. It's something different. It's true. The, yeah, I, um, I agree with that. Even if, even if no one's watching, I kind of, I, I agree with that. There's something cooler about it being live. Anyway. But, but, uh, but well, just, I mean, I'll, I can try again. Last time. Yeah, last time. And while you're doing that, I, I didn't find a different mug. I think about the same ones last time. Mine. I have a different mug, I remember it, but we're getting to the end of my collection. I told you that. Yeah, you did. T shirts were fine. I got lots of t shirts. Yeah, I got, I got okay, it's, just, it's not working. Forget it. I don't know what's going on. All right, well, we'll figure it out for next week. What's yeah. the t shirt? All right. So I thought a lot of heat going on this week. So we needed a little bit of calm, composure, and reflection and slowing down. It's and one of my favorite t shirts. On the back of a tortoise. Yeah, just hitching a ride. <laughs> they're both. I, I, that is I see it, bad. They're both, you know, kind of thinking about life as they travel. That is. <laughs> I don't know what to say about that. I've gone. I've gone the opposite end. Uh huh. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Ozzy Mendes was right. I'm assuming you've read Watchmen. Right? I have. It's on my shelf. I, I bought it because I didn't have it. Uh, and I, I read it a long time ago. And I bought it last year with the intention of, well, just having it in my collection. But, um, but I haven't read it again yet. So uh, it's been a while. The, the first time I read it, I wanted I haven't the seen day. the new TV show. Oh, I haven't seen that either. I've heard it's very good. Well, Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross are doing the soundtrack. So it's going to be good. But I, um, I, it was one of those things oh, I was my, reading. My mug is a Paris mug. The Paris cycling, cycling in Paris mug. Oh, great. Perfect. My uh, mom got me that for, for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> I said, let you know there's souvenir shops all over my place, mom. She's like, yeah, but this one is special. I'm like, okay, cool. Yeah, because she gave it to you. Sure, but, uh, it is. When I was but reading Watchmen, I wanted the day to end so I could get home and carry on reading it. It was, it, it's, it completely sucked me in. And then, of course, Ozzy Mendias is, um, is a poem, right? It's a famous poem. But I like the whole idea of we're humanity's power. We think we're everything. Humanity's arrogance. We think we're everything. And actually, we're not. Yeah. Hey, may, I never thought of that. Maybe the whole corona thing is a bit like Watchmen. We need a hero. Well, that's one perspective, a whole other one. But that's a tangent that I don't think I want to get into right now is uh what if we stop waiting for a leader or a hero to show up and just count it on ourselves to make things happen and work together? That's a much cooler way of doing things. I so kind of like, is... I read, there's a lot of thinking in, in that one that I want to keep exploring. We should, we probably will. But today is slightly different episode. Yes, we're cause... doing a slightly different format. Oh, let Although, me change my... I'm going to relate it to what you're saying, for sure. Sure. Definitely, for sure. Uh, should I say what we're doing and just go on with it? Yes, let's go. You say what we're doing. And then... So I had an I had uh, last weekend a fantastic opportunity to suddenly prepare a presentation for the final year students of a uh, communications and advertising uh, school. The, it's, it's 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 called ISCOM, the Higher Institute of Communi for Communications and Advertising. It's an international school uh, based. They got several locations in France, and honestly, I don't know everything about the curriculums, but. Um, this one was in English. <laughs> I should know. Then I'm like talking. And I'm like, wait, wait, I should know this. I looked at their website, but it doesn't, it doesn't. Anyway, the last final year students were talking about, and this is going to be interesting. I mean, for anybody watching one, I wanted to prepare and I shared the presentation out. So I thought it'd be cool to share it with you because I'm really happy with it. They were really happy with it. Um, and I thought it might be really interesting for your high school students and for any high school students and also for anybody who's generally interested in communications and advertising and current events altogether of what's going on. So 
the final week of their sprints, actually, mm. you know what? Let me share my screen because let's get into it. Um, how, how did you get this opportunity? Was this just one of those random through, things through that just friend. appeared? Yeah, through random thing that just appeared. Uh, a friend, a friend, the professor was looking for someone. <clears throat> uh, I don't really know what happened. Maybe they had somebody cancel. You can see it? Yeah, I can see it. Oh, no. It's not full screen though. Oh, wait, wait, I, I, I repressed the oh, wrong wow. button. You're using, you're using Google, whatever. Google Slides, yeah. <clears throat> and you, you find it pretty good? Yeah, actually, I started getting into it. I, um, oh, man, I keep, what? It's not mm -hmm. presentation mode. Okay. No, wait, ah, oh, I keep pressing the wrong buttons. I'm sorry. Really? I can't tell. Present. Let's present. Right? That's what I wanted to do. Yeah. There we go. <clears throat> do you, so a friend spoke to someone and they say, yeah, speak to Willem. And that's uh, the, no, the, the, the professor was just posted on Facebook saying, hey, do you know somebody who might be able to do an inspiring presentation for my high school students? And a, and a friend acquaintance tagged me on Facebook. And so I immediately contacted the professor and we talked on the phone. And fun fact, which is going to come through in the presentation, uh, I was at the... Black Lives Matter protest in Paris when I got the call for the job. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> and and how long did it take to put this together? Well, I had 48 hours, so that's that's how long it, it took, essentially. Uh, <laughs> I had the call on Saturday night and I started working at it on Sunday. Uh, in the midst, we had our conversation last Sunday as well. We did, yeah. And full on, really, Monday, all day, all night. And it was Tuesday morning. <laughs> and so my, my objective was, I had a very broad brief. The students were in their final week of, uh, and they had a live brief to do work. So to generate communications ideas, uh, to redefine food and drinks, shopper marketing experiences in the aid of COVID-19. Right. So the age of the pandemic and they were asked by a partner agency who did who does a lot of communication initiatives to promote food and beverage. So things like, you know, uh, organizing a day to cook with chefs to present new kitchen appliances or, you know, a, a tasting and sampling event or things like that. Right. Mm -hmm. And my job was to inspire them, get them started on their brief and, and uh, just empower and inspire their careers, generally speaking. Mm -hmm. So I thought, so I thought it'd be cool. Well, I wanted to present it, as I said, I thought it would be interesting for your students. And also the idea that, uh, I think we said at the end of the last call, just after we stopped recording, that you were kind of starting to run out of questions. So uh, I, I thought, well, actually the whole presentation ends with, do you have questions? So if anybody's watching, please send the questions over to James, not to me, right? Because James yeah. collects the questions and asks them to me. So yeah. and you have, you can send them to at James D'Souza 76, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but we're going to come back to questions and I'm going to a little bit speed through, but stop me if you, um, well, if you want to stop on anything, just stop me. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Uh, okay. So. That's pretty much what I said. I started explaining it. This is me, a uh, quick introduction, but I, I think everybody on this video knows who I am. I don't know if I should present it. Like a so this is like a visual CV, right? Places yeah. you've worked, yeah. clients you work for. Mm -hmm. Possible, what's possible? Possible is a digital agency that's about to be reintegrated. Um, it was created as a brand by, it's a digital agency. I worked for them for, I was contracting for them with them for a few months in Singapore. Okay. Uh, the, the name is about to disappear, just like a, a few others, but that it's hard, it doesn't really matter. The whole point is I'm a playful strategy consultant explaining a little bit what it is. I worked all over the place in the world. I worked with all these brands uh, and I specialize in um, doing brand strategy and communication and advertising strategy. You and you've got, with all of that. you've got a D20 on there. Yeah, I do have a D20. On there, <laughs> of course. Of course I do. So uh, I didn't have a lot of time to prepare for this presentation, as we said. Yeah. Uh, so I just went straight into, I'm not going to innovate in the way that I'm doing the presentation, which is going to go over the very classic three act narrative structure. Uh, so not to worry, you're on rails, uh, you're taken care of, everything's going to be fine and we're all going to have fun and uh, we're going to go all through the three acts. 
uh, there's going to be ups and downs, a little bit like this kind of roller coaster, but uh, all good. You know, it's kind, of, it's kind of the fun of the ride. Act one. Uh, so I went with the whole analogy of cooking because the theme is food and beverage. Uh, and the first step mise is mise en place. place. Mise en place. You get all the veg and food ready. Yeah. You get, you know, it's not just the veg, is it? You get the food, the ingredients, the tools. All of it ready. Everything ready. And then you cook, mm -hmm. which my wife doesn't do. And I get annoyed. You don't do what? The mise en place or the cooking? I do. When I'm cooking, when I'm cooking, I get everything ready because I learned from Tim Ferriss's Four Hour Chef, right? So I get I've it already. It, but yeah, it's, it's amazing. I, and I uh, it something. made me just go from utterly incompetent in the kitchen to I can stand the heat if I've got to do stuff. That's and the, I leave the kitchen cleaner than when I started after cooking. And my wife's an amazing cook. The food is amazing, but no mise en place. That's awesome. <laughs> Very interesting. Makes sense to use that. So act one, get everything ready, right? Yeah, act Three. one, we're getting everything ready. Uh, and uh, what else did I want to say? Oh yeah, I wanted to mention that because it happened in very 48 hours, I didn't have a lot of time. So the slides are a little bit wordy, but the benefit is I could share them quite easily with the rest of the world um, afterwards. Uh, without any explanation. That's yeah, a exactly. really good point. Yeah, because I've shared slides. It, doesn't, it means nothing. Yeah. So with, it, if it was sharing with, a, if I was sharing with a live audience and presenting in front of a live audience with time to write scripts, uh, or at the very least bullet points of what I'm talking about, then I would usually decide to not have a lot of things written on the slides, <laughs> just have like this kind of thing, right? <laughs> but, um, but because I didn't have time for that, I had just had enough time to write what I wanted to say on the slides. Uh, but that's okay, you know. So we did a bit of an icebreaker. What's your favorite ice cream? Which is usually what I ask at the end of my podcast. Makes sense, ice cream for everyone, right? Yeah. So I had replies in the chat. Then we did a little bit more of an icebreaker. Oh God, this was all in This was all virtual, wasn't it? So you're yeah. on the screen. It was a webinar screen. on Microsoft Teams. Oh right? man, okay, yeah. right. And I hadn't used Microsoft Teams, so I was a little bit nervous about that. It's um, pretty good, I think. I disagree, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't matter it's okay it's just not uh, well, let's not go into that it doesn't matter uh, <laughs> people really engage with this one which restaurant they missed that was kind of fun uh, a lot of good good stuff in the chat that's a great question yeah uh, and then talked about what my thing is a playful strategy so what i how i define playful strategy is uh defining a plan of action to achieve a long-term goal that's born out of the creativity provided by a play state of mind so in my portfolio presentation, I go into a lot more detail. And actually, I want to flesh that out a little bit more about what is a play, playful state of mind. And I'll be talking about that in a webinar I give on the Tuesday, 23rd of June, actually. Uh, that's at 11 a.m. UK. And otherwise, it's also the use of structured play, including game-like elements like cards, dice, tokens to generate new ideas, develop action plans, fulfill goals. And overall, it's about achieving unprecedented results. Yeah, the play state of mind is amazing. It is. It's cool. Um, nothing begets creativity like constraints. So when you're working on a creative brief, and you would know this, but also for anybody who's listening and watching this, strategizing, and this is helping them develop their brief, the whole of strategy, the role of strategy is defining the frame, at, like the context inside of which the creative ideas for communications take place. Mm -hmm. So all of that is expressed as a brief. It's kind of like, to keep with the food uh, analogy, it's, it's you're putting up the recipe to be able to have the dish that you're putting together at the end, you need to write the recipe so that somebody else can re reproduce it. That's part of the idea. So some of that is expressed in, so there's, again, there's a lot of different ways to express a brief, but I didn't want to spend too much time on this. Uh, the students have coaches and have classes on how to put a brief together. But some of the basic and most simple stuff for anybody listening to this, and just, that's useful in life, not just the brief of communications, is uh, you know who, when, how, what, why, and where. So yeah. defining that yeah. first and as fast as possible helps you to then come up with the best ideas possible because the, the narrower you are about what you're trying to do, mm -hmm. answering those questions, the better you're going to get uh, on the creative side of ideas. Again, that's all the idea that constraints beget creates, begets creativity. Yeah, we use so, the five W's at school. Yeah, great. So here, I, uh, it doesn't really matter, but I had, based on the brief they had, which was very open and broad, 
I gave them a few suggestions of stuff that would make sense from a brand and product to use and which country to do it in. And yep. then, but I didn't give them what the problem, the audience, that's like for them to figure out, right? Now you, that's part, we spoke about this because you did, you thought that we talked about how bad briefs, right? And a broad yeah. brief is, can be the most frustrating thing, right? Yes, absolutely. So That's you were trying of, to narrow, it looks like you're trying to narrow this down and give them some space to play. I, I suggested they narrow it the down and I thought they have, they have five days to do their job. Mm -hmm. The most interesting part is to come up with insights, problems, and ideas. But if you have to spend time trying to figure out what brand it's for, which country, yeah, it's not the Rabbit fun holes. part. I don't think yeah. it's the interesting part. Uh, so that's, that's my personal take on it, obviously. Hmm. So that's why I was like, you know what? I, I suggested they don't spend a lot of, like they decide as fast as possible what brand and which country they're doing it with. Because otherwise you could spend five days just like yeah. studying that and not get anywhere, you know? Or not produce anything. Yeah, not produce anything. It's just like spend a lot of time. Some of the pitfalls of, the, of working on these types of projects is how long do you spend on research? Right. Uh, and you can spend a lot of time doing research. And if you're not, if you're not given, and it's arbitrary, you have to arbitrarily, particularly for these types of exercises for a school, you have to arbitrarily put limits. Yeah. The limits you can put. So what I would do, the more experience I have, um, and the more I put a limit on how long I'm going to be spending on research and things like having a deadline helps. Like if yeah, I have 48 yeah, yeah. hours, I'm like, well, okay, I'm going to spend no time on research. I'm going to rely on things. I know <laughs> uh, I did do a little bit of research, but very, very little to be honest. Um, so also I, I wanted to, my whole thing being that I do what a lot of other professionals of strategy consultants on the brand strategy and communication strategy do that yeah. work in marketing, advertising, and branding. I offer the same types of services, but my differentiation is I offer it through play. And the play state of mind offers you new ideas. So yeah. in that, every time I do anything, I want to make sure that there's something that's playful inside, at least one thing, if not more. So uh, we ran an exercise and I asked them to pick, pick up their pen and uh, just get, get ready. And then they had two minutes to see how many words they could find in this word grid that I prepared for them. Mm. And they really engaged with that. Actually, the the winner had uh, eighteen words, and wow. then we had a bunch of couple of seventeen and twelve. But the the number of words you can find in two minutes is that the winner was for giggles. Is not really important. What's important was to say that actually, now you found your words. I curated what words were in that grid to be a collection, a vast collection of words that I believed would be useful and inspiring for your brief. And it's teamwork. So they had teams wow. of six people. And I thought, okay, you know what? The brain is going to be tuned to the words that you're finding. Whatever yeah. reason, I don't know why, but whatever words you find first and in a hurry, they mean something to you probably. So talk about them with your group. And in talking about them, look at how they connect or collide. There's a, lot, a really interesting uh, notion of ideas or connections or clashes. But which is the type of connection we talk about colliding and all together when you're working in a group don't like re please remember the principle for improv comedy like just keep building by doing yes and don't contradict any of the, the ideas around i mean you can always contradict but just the principle is building on on top of what everybody else is saying so yes and allows you to build collaboratively rather than to rather than just stagnating on the same level because you're disagreeing with one another wow i love that you so see you prime them with yeah. that word word search and then you're getting them to go boom with all the stuff yeah that's what i are i mean uh, that's what i asked them to do anyway well, i don't know what they did or not but that's the idea and i did some i did comedy improv as well and i've got books about it there's a lot of exercises that are absolutely playful in nature right and they're creative because it's all about just running creative, creative juices to be able to be ready to improvise. Wow. I, didn't, I don't think I knew you did that. Yeah, I did. Well, I did when I was a teenager and then I took an improv um, special when I was in Chicago before moving. And that was like, I, it, you know, there's a whole other story. I'll tell you about that some other time. Um, now that was act one. Okay. Act one and act two cooking. We're in the kitchen. 
and yeah. that's when okay while the restaurant gets enjoy guests enjoy the quiet front of the house the kitchen is where things get real right there's like scraps and burns and oil and mm. uh, you cut yourself and people yelling and you've got like the rush and you, everything needs to happen extremely fast it's like things get real right yeah. and my whole point here is we can't talk about inventing new food and beverage marketing experiences without acknowledging everything that's going on right now in the world yeah that makes sense uh, and I went to I choked up through all of these slides, but we're in the biggest uh, labor shock, biggest employment losses worldwide since World War II, right? Uh, there's a lot of impact on tourism is gigantic for all of these countries. All these countries are losing, the hotels are enormously affecting, losing like 15, 10 to 15% of their business. Uh, the execs from all the biggest hotel chains in the world are saying not every brand is going to survive this at mm -hmm. all, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, can Europe restaurants survive the coronavirus lockdown? Restaurants in France had minus 98% activity because they're all closed, obviously. And wow. there, there's a bunch that are not going to reopen. Absolutely not. Yeah. This is the livelihood of like thousands and thousands upon hundreds of thousands of people. Yeah. And now like even bigger, we go into agriculture and food. Low income countries that are prone to the triple burden of malnutrition due to the pandemic, income mm. shocks, disruption mm. to global supply chains. There's um, agricultural and food politics into this. Countries that normally export food started slowing that down. And I, I've not read updates, but I, I, one I believe I, I read was about Kazakhstan, who's the biggest, one of the biggest exporters of wheat. And wheat is, you know, wheat is flour, is bread, bread is like yeah. basic, just basic building block of yeah. our agrarian agricultural societies. Mm -hmm. And them stopping those things means not right now, but next year, there are countries that rely on that wheat that are going to go hungry. Mm. Very, very, very possibly. Like that's, again, millions of people affected by this. Not, not like, let alone the millions of tons of food and drink that have gone to waste all the food and drink in the states and all European countries that were destined for stadiums, destined for restaurants, destined for uh, consumption, life, all of that has just gone to the dump. It's just for the vast majority. There have been uh, initiatives of uh, nonprofits to try to salvage some of it, absolutely, and that's worth reading about and checking out, and I mm -hmm. told them that, but there ha has been millions, and by the way, millions of tons of food going to waste is not only a pandemic thing. It was a recurring, uh, uh, recurring problem just in modern society that yeah. we have enough to feed the world. It's not, yeah. it's not evenly distributed at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is because all those businesses have ordered it in advance, but then the pandemic hits, those people aren't going to those events, so then they've got all this stuff that they can't, yeah, okay. Yeah. And they it. can't repurpose it. Yeah. Um, fr like fruit and veg that was destined for restaurants that is going yep. to coming in like, you know, huge, huge amounts without any uh, packaging. Yeah. So they're like, well, we can't repackage it because there is laws that tell us that we need to repackage in certain ways. If it was going to go to a supermarket, mm. there are other, other people that there's also, there's also, I mean, of course, huge economic, um, and, uh, uh, things at stake. So people just yeah. also putting it to waste cause they don't want the prices to go up or go down or things like that. Right. Wow. Uh, uh, okay. Yeah. Now, all of this is, of course, impacting the vulnerable and compounding existing inequalities. Mm -hmm. uh, health, job, job, income, because, of course, like this is impacting the poorer populations more. And that means an impact on people's anxiety and worry, affecting social relations and trust, personal security, sense of belonging, particularly severe on those financially insecure living in the overcrowded housing compounding existing inequalities. And these are the people that I said that, that are poor. All the people that are probably over-indexing massively on those are the guys that are doing all those necessary jobs. Mm -hmm. Remember the necessary jobs during the lockdown? Mm -hmm. A lot of those people are doing those kinds of jobs, right? Mm -hmm. um, hold on, what just happened? Oh, so this, I think oh, you good. clicked a link. You opened uh, the link. I, I linked to the report. This is this big report is all of the information from uh, all the international organizations. So there's stuff from the UN, from the OECD, 
from uh, the World Health Organization, from the World Bank, et cetera. So those are pretty, you know, they're, they're like smart people that have worked on this stuff, right? And this, this is one of the key skills you're demonstrating. How do you find information, synthesize it, and make it usable for the context in which you're in? And that's what you're doing here. It's such a key skill. Yeah. And it's fascinating to hear someone else who's good at it put this together because I'm listening and learning. Yeah, great. Now, next, this is testing our human rights resilience like nothing else. And I've, pick, I've cherry picked a few slides, of course, to stay within the food and drinks beverage, but not only because it goes bigger than this, right? This was like, it's a public health emergency, yes, but it's impacting civil, cultural, economic, political, and social rights. It's a huge test of our society's resilience and respect for human rights will be mm -hmm. fundamental to the success of our responses and recovery. And now, ah, ah, I'm gonna get there, ah my effect so you may have noticed we're in the middle of huge civil unrest worldwide starting in the states but going on everywhere right mm -hmm. the movement is gigantic and i have a video that you might have seen but maybe you students haven't uh warning there's like a there is um uh swearing in this i'm gonna skip to one minute 20 or so if i can ah I can't see my, oh no, I can't. Oh, wait, what? I'm not sure we can hear though. We, we should be able to. You know what, um, let me go to the video directly. I know why, it's because I silenced the video because I thought we'd be live. I yeah. think that's why. I love that the first thing is note taking. Says what you've been looking for on YouTube. Yeah, I've been, I've been, uh, <laughs> I've been going <laughs> full on into note taking at the moment. Yeah, it's I, I, I removed the sound because I thought we were going to be live. So there is a tiny bit of swearing in this, just so you know, for your students. Uh, I we're skipping to one minute twenty, mostly because a lot of the swear, swearing is in the first minute, and I don't think it changes much to the whole overall message. Uh, okay. Feel free to watch the rest of the video. Oh, it's a clean edit. Does that mean it's no swearing? Which oh. leaked out. That's all right. Well, then that's, it's okay, actually, because most of what's important is, is not, although the swearing, I think, adds to it, to be honest, but. You know what? I want the swearing. Is it working? Wait, we're doing something else. I haven't seen this video. I haven't you watched have not a seen lot of this? videos. Fantastic, because no. it's very, very, very powerful. There's, there's a lot. I, haven't I did a lot better. I did better when I was presenting to just go uh, bam, bam, bam. I even I choked up. I even choked up when I was presenting this thing to be like really present, looking at those charts and going fast through them to say like, this is not about the numbers. This is about the livelihood of millions and millions of people that are suffering. Well, I'm getting that as I listen to it. Great. I think that as long as we're focusing on the what, we're not focusing on the why, and that's my issue with that. As long as we're focusing on what they're doing, we're not focusing on why they're doing. Uh, and some people are like, okay. Should just try It's lowering. a bit jerky, low in quality. I saw the A cab in the background as well. <laughs> Let's try 720. Well, those aren't people who are legitimately angry about what's happening. Those are people who just want to get stuff. Okay, well then, let's go with that. Let's say that's what it is. Let's ask ourselves why in this country in 2020, the financial gap between poor blacks and the rest of the world is at such a distance that people feel like their only hope and only opportunity to get some of the things that we flaunt and flash in front of them all the time is to walk through a broken glass window and get it. That they are so hopeless that getting that next getting that TV, getting that change, getting that bed, getting that phone, whatever it is that they're going to get is that in that moment when the riots happen and if they present an opportunity of looting, that's their only opportunity to get it. We need to be questioning that why. Why are people that poor? Why are people that broke? Why are people that that food insecure, that clothing insecure, that they feel like their only shot, 
that they are shooting their shot by walking through a broken glass window to get what they need. And then people want to talk about, well, there's plenty of people who pulled themselves up by their bootstraps and got it on their own. Why can't they do that? Let me explain to you something about economics in America. And I'm so glad that as a child, I got an opportunity to spend time at PUSH where they taught me this, is that we must never forget that economics was the reason that black people were brought to this country. We came to do the agricultural work in the South and the textile work in the North. Do you understand that? That's what we came to do. We came to do the agricultural work in the South and the textile work in the North. Now, if I right now, if I right now decided that I wanted to play Monopoly with you, and for 400 rounds of playing Monopoly, I didn't allow you to have any money, I didn't allow you to have anything on the board, I didn't allow for you to have anything, and then we played another 50 rounds of Monopoly, and everything that you gained and you earned while you were playing that round of Monopoly was taken from you. That was Tulsa, that was Rosewood. There are pla those are places where we built black economic wealth, where we were self-sufficient, where we owned our stores, where we owned our property, and they burned them to the ground. So that's 450 years. So for 400 rounds of Monopoly, you don't get to play at all. Not only do you not get to play, you have to play on the behalf of the person that you're playing against. You have to play and make money and earn wealth for them, and then you have to turn it over to them. So then for 50 years, you finally get a little bit and you're allowed to play. And every time that they don't like the way that you're playing or that you're catching up or that you're doing something to be self-sufficient, they burn your game. They burn your cards. They burn your Monopoly money. And then finally at the release and the onset of that, they allow you to play and they say, okay, now you catch up. Now at this point, the only way you're going to catch up in the game is if the person shares the wealth, correct? But what if every time you share the wealth, then there's psychological warfare against you to say, oh, you're an equal opportunity higher. So if I played 400 rounds of Monopoly with you and I had to play and give you every dime that I made, and then for 50 years, every time that I played, I, if you didn't like what I did, you got to burn it like they did in Tulsa and like they did in Rosewood. How can you win? How can you win? You can't win. The game is fixed. So when they say, why do you burn down the community? Why do you burn down your own neighborhood? It's not ours. We don't own anything. We don't own anything. There is, Trevor Noah said it so beautifully last night. There's yeah. a social contract that we all have, that if you steal or if I steal, then the person who is the authority comes in and they fix the situation. But the person who fixes the situation is killing us. So the social contract is broken. And if the social contract is broken, why the fuck do I give a shit about burning the fucking football hall of fame, about burning a fucking target? You broke the contract when you killed us in the streets and didn't give a fuck. You broke the contract when for 400 years we played your game and built your wealth. You broke the contract when we built our wealth again on our own by our bootstraps in Tulsa and you dropped bombs on us. When we built it in Rosewood and you came in and you slaughtered us. You broke the contract, so fuck your target. Fuck your Hall of Fame. As far as I'm concerned, they could burn this bitch to the ground. And it still wouldn't be enough. And they are lucky that what black people are looking for is equality and not revenge. That's great. Yeah. And a lot Very of people good. don't, certainly when I talk about the British Empire, and when I talk about the economic drive, and when I talk about the, the systemic inequality, and when I talk about the, how much, how dehumanizing it was, and how much has been built on the back of it, people don't know. People don't know the history, no. and don't know how much it's stacked against it. They don't know that people were you know, the communities are brought from India, the Indian subcontinent to work here. They don't know that. I, which I'm amazed that. by the fact that people don't know that. And yeah. They don't but know still, about like, so I'll, they I'll, know I'll about take stuff. time to, to educate people who are interested. And that's why it's, it's important. 
Well, that's why this, that's why we're doing what we're doing because yeah. we're opening up the questions here. So yeah. all of this is providing amazing context for this brief that they're working on. Yeah. And I, and I wanted to circle it back to say, there's a lot like, so, you know, we went over how wide and big and mind boggling, if you really put your mind to it, how mind boggling it is, the impact of COVID-19 that we still have no idea. Mm. But right now, the biggest thing going on are the civil unrest and the, and the protests, but mm. also to circle it back to the food and drinks. Mm. Uh, one, one, I wanted to make sure that I'm saying like, whatever your personal thoughts, belief, convictions, ideologies, or your parents, if you're in high school, or the things that you might be repeating, whatever they are, we are facing truly global, complex, connected and correlated crisis yep. that concern us all. Like this is, yep. it concerns everybody. Mm -hmm. Now, if you want to learn more about the protests, I recommend the documentary 13th. It's a very good one. Uh, there's more recommendations at the end, but also putting things back into perspective, I want to say there's uh, food stamps is another one. Food stamps in the US are, uh, I guess, like an overwhelming majority I don't exactly have the stat, but there's a lot of minorities and black people that are using food stamps. They're losing access to food stamps. That's something that was voted in a few months ago. Uh, COVID-19 overall has a devastating impact on African-Americans. So they're suffering more in comparison. And it, so all of, their, all of their situations compounding. So there's yeah. tons of stuff stacking on, on top of one another. And yeah. when people, I've heard and I've seen people in the past week go, well, I don't understand what people are protesting. And I'm, <laughs> I'm giving this, this is like, this is people that I, acquaintances, not very close friends necessarily on Facebook, but clearly white people, most of the time, not only white, but quite a few that are clearly completely not with the program and they need to learn what's going on. They're like, well, there, isn't there a serious pandemic going on? Yeah. If, yes, there is. Try being hungry. Yeah. Try going hungry for weeks or days yeah. and try like you've given all your food and money to your kids and now you're not sure how you're going to feed your kids. For anybody who doesn't know or realize the Arab Spring in 2011, that's how it started because they didn't yeah. have food. Yeah. Which, which thing are you going to think is going to be the most important? You're going to be like you're being killed by like the experience that you're being killed by police brutality and that you're going hungry or the you know the pandemic somewhere around that you can't actually see yeah we react yeah, I, to the biggest threat that's normal you, you body might stuff. know you might know this like a there isn't there some i can't remember who told me there's something about if food prices increase by x percent that's when there's going to be a revolution there or it was something i didn't but i talked about that with my brother i don't know exactly what those numbers are but we talked about something similar yeah there is there is something like that I and mean, i did i think i knew that about the hour of spring but i totally forgot and it makes complete yeah. sense yeah total sense if you don't have access to the things you need to survive then yeah. things are going to kick off yeah sorry because I, I linked to every one of the images and i'm supposed to click <laughs> on it it's just and i can't see my tabs it's just it's really sick. and you are um oh, isn't there a keyboard shortcut for moving through tabs probably no, but oh, at the time, Mac. but when I go That's up why. to when I go up to my tab to hover on my tab, it just it makes the the um, anyway whatever screen sharing the screen basically. sharing. But, menu but when you did up. this, it was super slick and it went really well. Yes. <laughs> Are you feeling comfortable? Uh, well, yes. it was not as it was not as slick as I wanted because I couldn't show the video in the presentation. They had to go and watch it separately. Okay. But it felt slicker than what we're doing now. <laughs> Okay, Even though right. I thought I thought it would be slicker with Zoom, but actually I'm not really complete. But it's good. It's good practice. Yeah, and yeah, I am feeling uncomfortable. Welcome to the midpoint. The midpoint is the middle of the story, it's where yeah. the character and the protagonist seems to furthest furthest from fulfilling his goal of desire. I think feeling uncomfortable is the right thing. We don't want to feel uncomfortable, but you need mm. to confront what's going on. You don't need to, mm. but. I would say that, and I know like in the context of your students, they're just high schoolers, right? So it's, it's, I'm not wanting to make anybody, there's a, so here's, like, here's the distinction. You need to feel uncomfortable. It's important, well, one, that you have feelings, but to want to do anything about the situation. And I think if you're, if you're just indifferent and going like, I don't want to see this thing because I don't want to be uncomfortable, then you're probably more being part of the problem than a solution. 
And that's back to what we talked about last week about this being part of a system in society. So it is mm. both nothing to do with you individually mm -hmm. and everything to do with you individually because you're part of the system in whatever way you are, right? Mm -hmm. So let's stop and breathe. And uh, we did a sh very quick exercise. It was kind of like a short break and I explained to them a principle that when you stop and breathe and if you make an effort to exhale longer than you inhale, just for a couple of counts, so you're like inhale for three, pause, exhale for five, it automatically signals to your brain and nervous system that your body is not in danger and that you can relax and calm down. Wow. And when you have those kinds of thoughts, a lot of input of information, and you might be a little bit breathing faster, your heartbeat's going a little bit faster, you're putting in yourself in the situation of threat, fight or flight risk, you're activating your limbic system, right? So stopping to exhale, breathe, it's calming. It brings you back to like, what can you do about this? Or well, it puts you in a state where you can think clearly. Yeah. about what you can do about this absolutely exactly that's that's great <clears throat> now i also have a message from my brother bjorn vanderhurst my older brother is the vice president of food beverage and strategy at aiken spence hotels and he's also a michelin star chef hi i'm uh, bjorn vanderhorst uh i'm a uh Serious food and beverage professional, over 25 years of experience. I'm a cook by trade. I've uh, gained accolades and awards and Michelin stars in New York and London. And I've traveled the world and I've had huge accomplishments and and uh, many failures as well, which is all part of the part of the experiences of life and business. Now I work as the uh, vice president of food, beverage, and strategy for a, a large corporate. Uh, hotel group, uh, Aiken Spence Hotels and Resorts in the Indian Ocean, based in Sri Lanka, but we have businesses in Maldives and Oman and India and all these beautiful, um, luxurious destinations. Uh, obviously, uh, the elephant in the room is that 21 of our 22 hotels at the moment uh, are closed. You could imagine the impact that this uh, COVID-19 grand pause has had on our business uh, and it is it is very difficult times uh, however I, I remain super enthusiastic because with these super challenging times uh, uh, globally uh, health wise politically etc it puts you in front of a blank sheet of paper like nothing else possibly could so if you're a creative person or you're an excited business entrepreneurial type person um, these are super exciting times. These are times when your back is against the wall and you have to find solutions to um, big problems and creative solutions to big problems. Um, and so uh, I see it as an extremely exciting uh, uh, opportunistic moment. Uh, and, and not the kind that's like blood on the streets, buy property, not that kind of opportunity, but the opportunity to reinvent, uh, reboot uh, our entire uh, food and beverage industry from the distribution to the con consumption and my expertise is in taste it's not in uh, the selling or the marketing uh, that's your domain uh, mine is in the creation of taste and um, uh, the, the influence of taste uh, and that's where that's where I, I stand and I look at uh, a bit like a like a fashion designer I look at taste um, uh, is what, what the people want, what the people want, what people in general want, what my customers want. Um, and in order to do that, I also look at what's going on in the world, importantly, uh, fashion, what people are wearing, what's in style, what's healthy, what's not, what's being said. It's hard these days because it goes so fast. Uh, but by looking, by taking a step back and observing, you can become uh, an instigator of what's, uh, 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 what's being eaten or how it's being eaten or how it's being produced. And, uh, um, and so by, by researching that, I got involved in 
uh, researching a lot of cool and wonderful things, and one of them is food politics, which is very relevant today. So I, I, I strongly suggest and urge that you, uh, for your research or for your own benefit uh, and, and, and uh, self-development, go and research what food politics is all about, and there's all sorts of different things. But it has to do, very in very brief uh, words, uh, with what, what policy and legislation uh, globally and nationally at all levels uh, is being put in place. Um, which in a way dictates what we eat, how we eat it, when we eat it, how it's distributed, where it comes from, and all of those things. So th that has a huge, huge impact in what's available. Um, and it, it, it pushes you to sit on the fence somehow politically, uh, which is not the, not the, um, uh, the, the base of the, the, the foundation of the thing. However, it does, it does uh, push one to uh, be aware of the impact that the food has. And food, obviously, it's something that we all need. It's not even something we all do. It's, we actually need it. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's one of those um, essentials. Uh, so it will never go away. It's just going to transform. It's going to look different. It's going to taste different. There'll be different flavors. Um, and it's all very exciting. And I feel, I feel excited to be at this stage of my career um, uh, in a position where we're strategizing about how and what uh, our industry is going to look like um, in in the next three, six, nine months, uh, two to three years. Uh, it's exciting times, and I know you're all graduating, and I wish you all the very, very best. Um, you know, the world needs young, enthusiastic, intelligent, fun individuals like yourselves. So uh, all I can say is I wish you the very, very best. Good luck. Um, it's not that scary. Just jump in and enjoy. I so that was Such the end of it. Huh? Such a pro. He's yeah. such a pro. He's so like, so great at what he does. Act three, <clears throat> service. So rethinking food and beverage communications. Now we've like, we've taken stock of what's going on in the world. Yeah. We're away from the rush of the back of the house in the kitchen. We've got the privilege to sit back. We can think, talk, enjoy ourselves, which is what we usually do in those videos anyway. And funny enough, I'm pretty sure that some of the most interesting ideas I've heard and most stimulating conversations I've had took place over some kind of food and drinks. At the very least, coffee. Yeah. <laughs> right? Um, and so here are some trends and things that have been going on from the silly to just like a wide panel. So one, coronavirus-themed foods, apparently, uh, burgers. There's this other thing, like the biggest Chinese delivery service started delivering their food with this big, just folding, foldable uh, shield <laughs> thing going on. Wow. Kind of interesting. Uh, oh. I, I'm going to succeed at some there's point. There's something, while you're doing this, like, there's something that happened here. We, uh, yeah. there's, there's a, something called Pizza Pilgrims. They have a, they have a so restaurant. So annoying. But what they, what they do is you can order their, uh, a pack that's really well put together uh -huh. with some dough, some oil, some tomato puree, some meat, and they show you how you can, you put the pizza dough in a frying pan, put everything on, then put it in the oven, and in less than 10 minutes, you have your own Pizza Pilgrims pizza. And they've yep. been sending out these packs. So I'm really glad to hear that, that your brother said that there is opportunity to get creative about how we solve these problems. Yeah. And I think that's, that's one of the main things that I'd be striving for the message to come across in all our videos. And yeah. it's certainly what you're, you're, you seem to be saying, there's an opportunity to get creative. Yes, it's, it is both. I'm saying both, you need to be extremely aware of what's going on and how serious yeah. it is and yeah. of the opportunity. Yeah. Both together. Totally agree. Yeah. Uh, so this was a campaign I worked on pro bono during the lockdown with a uh, collective of freelance uh, professionals in France and a website called En Première Ligne, which was putting in contact uh, volunteers with people who needed help during the lockdown in particular, or now, uh, people who might be at risk, uh, older people who needed, or people working essential jobs who needed just, just a hand with their shopping or groceries or childcare, things like that. So we worked on that. Um, and... You might have to explain pro bono to... I know. Oh, sorry. So this was basically, oh, I, I volunteered. I did, we did this for free. Because I'm thinking I could just play this video in one of my lessons and have it be a lesson.
A uh, few other things. So in an automated family farm in, uh, on the Devon Cornwall in England, started uh, live <laughs> cattle viewing. So you could or private, schedule a private real-time live viewing of the bulls for sale so through YouTube Live. <laughs> Fantastic. So that you're both forwarding small businesses. Uh, <laughs> and I, I, as far as I can understand, this is the kind of stuff where you know, you, you know the bull is, or the, the cow has been, well, the animal has been just been well taken care of and you're, I think buying a portion of it with a bunch of other people when it gets slaughtered. I think that's what it is. Okay. Uh, but you know, just like interesting, interesting times, right? Uh, this is more matching to the pizza example that you talked about. Fat Rice mm -hmm. in Chicago was one of the first restaurants to rebrand and change entirely and announce officially. So it's a super cool, trendy, very interesting owners, very interesting communications altogether, which is why I chose this particular one as an example. Um, they uh, offer Macau. So it's Macau, uh, close to Hong Kong, is particularly famous for their gambling, but is also, it was a Portuguese counter, colonial counter. Yeah. So they have Portuguese Asian fusion food, uh, which is what they offer at uh, Fat Rice. But they changed their restaurant, announcing officially that they're like no longer a restaurant. They're now the Fat Rice Mart. Uh, they reorganized their whole inside to say, well, we're not going to go back to restaurant. We don't know when that's going to happen. So we're now a specialty grocery store where you can buy all sorts of products from like Macau, Portugal, Asia inspired. You can buy meal kits, just like you said, of like our own mm -hmm. recipes, but you make them at home. Action uh, cooking. I love the branding, Nintendo. The stuff. branding, of course. I mean, I, I was like, I don't Amazing. know how much that made sense to the younger people, but just for the sake of your students and anybody watching, it makes sense for James and I, because this is 8-bit <laughs> Nintendo systems yeah. that we grew up with uh, playing. That's really clever. Uh, and then did you, did you, did, I mean, did you ever watch Yellow's Marbles runs? That's so good. No. I found out about Yellow's Marbles run, marble runs like last year at some point, I think, or maybe the year before, I can't remember. Um, and they're commentated marble races. So each one of the marbles, so there's entire tournaments, there's uh, sand rallies, there's uh, that what, what they call Marbula One. So there's, there's a whole track for like Formula One and mock, mock, we're going to Jakarta and Paris and Monaco and all those places, but not for real, right? Uh, but it's serious, serious, like there's two commentators. Each one of the marbles has uh, their name, their identity, their sponsors, <laughs> and they drop the marbles and they comment on the race. Um, and before the lockdown, they had about, if I, like, I can't remember what the numbers were, but about like 200,000 subscribers, 200, uh -huh. 200,000 subscribers. And because there's no sports and live sports and uh, like there's, they're, because of they're none of that, right? So John Oliver on last week tonight on HBO did a whole episode a few weeks ago about sports during the lockdown. And um, Yellow's Marble Runs, who are based in the Netherlands, we're looking for a new title sponsor because their sponsors had dropped them because of the lockdown and partly. So John Oliver took over being the main sponsor and they talked about it. And because he has a very big audience on HBO uh, and that got picked up by more media, they moved in the past few weeks from, they moved to like they're at 1.5 million subscribers now. <laughs> And actually, I mean, given your face, I need to show you a video of like the Marvel. Yeah, I want to see this. So funny. I want to see it's it. It's fantastic. <laughs> I was. It's uh, my favorite are the, my favorite are the 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 rally ones that are the the that are in the. Oh wait, well, I'm just this is just crazy anyway. <laughs> I'll show you an actual video of a, of a race. How fantastic. Is, it's so good. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. So they drop so marbles. Like. Strangely, I learned a lot about creativity ah. from someone who was very. So, mute, mute the app. 1709. Skip it. There we go. Not stabilized early, 
you're going to be all out of sorts for the bottom part of this course. And BMW have been trending upwards, 10th and 3rd in their qualifying efforts. Let's see where they place today after a 17.09. Oh, so that is the benchmark time. Nissan next up as they drop okay, down let's, through. Let's skip because this is the qualifying. This is the and we go rolling in Jakarta. Good start from Tachita. They get out in front. That really quick attack mode stratifies everybody so quickly. You have to have yourself in order here. And look at the gap that's being pulled out already. Across the line then to complete lap one. Up the ramp and down towards the start of the second one. It's Porsche who have managed to get the lead back from Tachita. BMW running in third place. Then it's a big train of cars behind. <laughs> Wait, uh, let me show you one of the rally ones because the, the sand rally ones are fantastic oh as well. God, that is Isn't that geez. amazing? And this has been going on for a while. See, he's at 1.15 um, subscribers now. Let's find him. Uh, oh my gosh. How the, just. Four events to make it to the big league here in the showdown for the Marble Rally. Hey everybody, I'm Greg Woods. Four races in this video. The top four marbles of this showdown will join the top. Let's go straight to it. <laughs> Look at all the race info, the conditions, and everything. <laughs> Duct tape oh comes out of nowhere it's and racing. finishes in fourth. Duct tape was no conditions, but nothing that these marbles can't handle. A good start here for Big Pearl. She immediately stretches out to that lead. I think she was disappointed with her finish in the first race <laughs> lollipop again does it actually work the running well up in stuff? second place <laughs> I was just a... <laughs> I'm asking you like you've watched loads yeah I, no I've not I've never watched more than a few minutes of each one of them I'm not really into sports and that's like because it's marbles hasn't changed that that much except that I absolutely adore this but I've I think I've watched one full 15 minute video and that's it I'm not, I'm not that into sport, but this kind of thing... About to say running in third was Blazing Fireball, but loses out to Green Turtle. I think you should pause this before we get too deep into this. Yeah, no, no, this, because like, I still have more stuff to talk about. Exactly. I, have, I watched Dodgeball, and the commentary on live Dodgeball <laughs> is absolutely brilliant. It is just like the film, but <laughs> honestly, it's properly <clears throat> taken seriously. Okay, ready for this one? It's going to blow your mind. Uh, so is it really? And another thing I've already been blown. <laughs> God, this, we're not finished. We're almost finished. So uh, I thought, okay, what's going on on TikTok? And what if they just collide several trends together? One is, of course, this viral food stuff. So yeah. some of the latest ones are people making tiny cookies or pancakes and then throwing them in a bowl and eating them with milk like cereal. Uh, whipped coffee. I don't really know what the recipe is, but that's the thing going on. Is Carrot it? and okay. bacon, I it's a thing. What, now, what, what is? Bacon? And I, well, hang on, uh, hang on. What? Carrot and bacon. I don't know why. In, don't ask. In me. coffee. No, no, no. That's separate from the coffee. Uh, okay. Right. And then, uh, this I found out the week before, thanks to another strategist called Zoe. Uh, there's cult. There's this. The newest thing from May in TikTok is cult wars. So this lady created. She just started this thing. She said, "Hey, let's create a cult to her followers." And so she first crowdsourced a name for the cult. Uh, so it's called the Step Chicken Cult. And uh, the activity of this cult, as far as I can figure out, and I'm not spending a lot of, I'm like too old for TikTok. So I know these things, I checked it out quickly, but I'm not an expert, right? Uh, as far as I can understand from, descri from description and watching a couple of quick videos, the main activity of this, the cult is to, so one, anybody joining the cult was asked to change their profile photo to hers, this one on the right. Okay. Think, right? Yeah. So, and then very quickly, so th this is like very quickly it blew up to thousands and thousands of people, right? Uh, <laughs> and very quickly, everybody was like, why am I seeing this lady everywhere on, on everybody's profile photo? Who is she? And everybody's like, that's the cult. You want to join? <laughs> and the other main activity, there might be others, but is to organize a, to give a time and place and uh, a user mm -hmm. and then all the cult members will comment on that user's uh, post at the same time. So they just comment bomb. I don't know what about, 
Uh, but then very quickly, so then after we'd gone past hundreds of thousands of people following, we're in millions, right, at this point, right? Yeah. Millions of people watching this thing. Yeah. Uh, other people said, well, we're going to be doing a competing cult. Because, because. <laughs> the, the cult war started. And uh, I don't, the, the, the crowdsourced another name for the other cults. And so just like people chose camps between the two cults. And then they had battlegrounds where they were at war. The battleground was like some random user that they would choose who would suddenly see thousands of people commenting on their, on their posts. Uh, you know. Wow. And I don't know exactly how you win the battle, but certainly there were comment bombing all over the place. So I told the students, all right, here are truth things that are going on on TikTok. What would you make of mixing those up together, I guess? Did they know? Did, you, did the students know? I don't think so, but I don't I'm going to throw a reference into Step Chicken in a lesson and see what happens. My yeah, guess this is, is being... This is brand new. I mean, I, it's just so annoying. It keeps... Well, it seemed to be a, it seemed to be a good idea to... And it seems to be a complete thing to, um, to put links to everything on the, all the images, but because I need to click on Zoom to be able to push forward on the... Yeah, anyway, yeah, yeah. No, I get so, it. All right, let's keep going because I was oh, never going to get to with this. So playing with food. <clears throat> I told them you might want to look at what's been done by chefs around molecular cuisine, particularly in terms of they played around with sensory, uh, sensory experiences a lot. So Heston Blumenthal and the Fat Duck restaurant, this was a playing card that is actually made of chocolate and strawberry jam. Uh, another one that my brother told me about, actually, because he went there, I didn't, uh, mm -hmm. was when then there's a lot of other examples like that. But when he went and he went with his wife, uh, one of the dessert things was two chocolate balls, two chocolates. Uh, one person had a very crunchy chocolate and a lapel mic that was like aimed at their mouth. The other one had a smooth chocolate with earphones. So when you're eating the smooth chocolate, you're hearing the crunch and it makes you feel like the thing you're eating is crunchy. Oh my God. Because some of the questions are, how do we translate food experiences with social distancing and fear of disease? So mixing sensorial experiences is an interesting way to look at, thing to look at, right? Oh my God. <laughs> so now, uh, thinking and design for the extremes. Mm. So bell curve, and we talked about this, I think, a little bit in another episode. Yeah, this is a great thing, I think you said. It's great. Yeah, so you know, distrib a traditional distribution curve at the top of it is the mass majority of the population. And then you have extreme cases or special mm -hmm. cases. This concept is also called universal design. The whole idea being that if you go and look on the extremes, minority situations or situations that only apply to very few people or very few instances. And if mm -hmm. you design to solve their problem, Mm. You might be doing something that solves it for everyone, and that is going to be very different than trying to solve the go to the lowest common denominator of the mm. middle of the bell curve. Mm. 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 And uh, here it says, but well, that's where insight happens. That's where new ideas happen, right? So, for example, and I think I gave that example, I can't remember, but that's in the objectified, I told you this, but I don't know if it was in the recording, objectified documentary about industrial design. And OXO is a really, really great brand of, uh, of objects and appliances. And uh, the designers went to look at people who had arthritis or other kinds of, uh, um, they, they just couldn't close their hands entirely. And so they redesigned this peeler. And again, we stay in the concept of like the topic of food kind of thing, right? They redesigned this peeler to have a much larger grip so that mm -hmm. people who had okay. uh, hands, hand problems and arthritis could grip it. And of course it works for everyone. Yeah. And it's got a distinct visual look from all sorts of other peelers. So it, has a, so it has a competitive advantage and it swiveled as well to make the peeling easier. So that changed a lot of things. So Debbie Millman in Brand Thinking talks about that quote, the way we think about everybody is not to think about the average person in the middle, but to think about the extremes to think about yeah. people at the edges of your potential buying public and think about people who are the most challenged in yeah. this particular case, right? Yeah, this is, this so, is great. It's in a book about empathy where, yeah. um, and you, I don't know if you might be going on to this, but the, there's a woman who's a designer, it might have been her actually, who dressed up as an old woman and lived as an old woman, like the whole, the whole thing, and discovered loads of insights about how 
she could design things that would make a difference for older people by living that way. She discovered the problems by going to that level, like of deep empathy. I See, think that's, this that is too. where you put yourself in somebody else's shoes. That's why I love role playing as well. Mm. And that's why I also love my job in terms of trying to figure out how is what's going on in somebody else's head. So mm. I, I put a few examples together of when we talk about, so this was about product design, but it works for brands as well. So brand yeah, thinking yeah. Both, both of them together. So picking up from the last example, OXO is all about if somebody can't physically use an object of an everyday object, there has to be a better way to make it so that everybody. And if you think about special uh, physical, like difficulties or disabilities and you make it work for them, it may well work for everyone. And that's why when you think about what does Black Lives Matter stand for and what it is about, it's all about ending systemic racism and having people get that when Black Lives Matter, then everyone's lives matter. Mm. Uh, and I thought it'd be interesting to throw Make America Great Again, because from a brand perspective, you know what, it got like the current US president elected. Mm -hmm. uh, and in boiling it down, so I didn't go and check but Black Lives Matter, it doesn't, didn't have, I mean, as far as I know, some, one person thinking it doesn't have one organization behind it. So yeah. this is my distillation. I'm not, I'm not personally, so like, that's my personal distillation and analysis on what that looks like, right? Yeah. So I'm not, yeah. I've not seen their own. But Make America Great Again is all about a promise for change, a promise of change for those wanting or needing it. And this whole dream of a return to past glory days, but also translating into a better tomorrow and a better future. Mm -hmm. Uh, so a lot about uh, nostalgia and pride because we're pride month as well. It's celebrating love and all love. So LGBTQ plus and everyone of any and all gender identity and sexual orientation, accepting and loving one another. So when you, when you accept and love LGBTQ people, then everyone and everyone yeah. can love each other. Yeah. Right? And so I wanted to talk about this thing called uh, my last point was synesthesia and an article that some people can really taste the rainbow. Yeah. And this is straight from Wikipedia. So I'm just reading through synesthesia is a perceptual phenomenon in which stimulation of one sensory or cognitive pathway leads to involuntary experiences in a second sensory or cognitive pathway. Clearly the thing I just talked about with the crunchy chocolate and the smooth chocolate, that's what it is. You're mixing mm -hmm. things up, you're mm -hmm. mixing sound, you're hearing sound and makes you feel like you're crunching something. Now, even further, very rare form of this is lexical gustatory synesthesia. Like, I love the word of it. Is a rare form of synesthesia in which spoken and written language, as well as some colors and emotions, causes wow. individual to experience an automatic and highly consistent taste and smell combination. Because taste and smell are linked to senses, right? The taste is often experienced as a complex mixture of both temperature and texture. So people who have this condition for real, can taste words, ideas, and concepts. Words, ideas, and concepts are going to taste like something, like yeah. artichoke, yeah. chocolate yeah. ice cream, whatever. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So, something sweet to finish the meal. Most important, like some say dessert is the most important part of the meal, right? Uh, remember, human beings made all of this stuff up, a lot of it up. Like, they're sort of hedges against the vast uncertainties of life. And personally, I'm figuring out life as I go. I have no yeah. more idea than you what's going to happen, or really anyone. The only thing I've worked out so far is I'm probably going to die wondering what I want to do when I grow up. I'm probably <laughs> going to wonder what I want to do when I grow up until the day I die. I put this quote, so there's no, there ain't no rules around here. We're trying to make something, right? And where we go from here. Yeah. As corny, naive, utopian, or far from true as it may seem, I got into this racket because I believe that mass communications can be used to make a positive difference for the planet and for everyone. Better knowing yourself, what you want, better knowing how culture, society, and the world works are all keys to the future. And I say, whatever you find out about it, share it because with great power comes great responsibility. Talk to people, get involved, join, create communities. And you've answered the question. And I got one more video to finish things and I got a few more slides. Up. No shortcuts. No, no shortcuts.
And well, ah, <laughs> I'm not managing this at all. Like what's going on? People who say it can't be done should not interrupt those who are doing it. Listen, be interested, be kind, play and have fun. Black Lives Matter. Listen, be interested, have fun. Be kind. No, listen, be interested, play and have fun. Yeah. Right. Now that <clears throat> actually answers the question that I was going to pose you. We've done it the other way around. We've given the answer before the question. Can you go back to the last, just go back one more. Be, listen, be interested, be kind. Well, there's first, there's this one. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah, that's great. Casey Neistat, of course. Not a Chinese proverb. He does, he has a lot of those. And this one, I was shared by Marcus Brown, another person I know who has great videos. I think I mentioned him. Uh, yep, yeah, that's for sure. Listen, this was my trip to Tanzania in 10 years ago, almost, almost 10 years ago. Oh God, yeah, I remember that. Listen, be interested, be kind. Play, Play have, have fun. fun. And the question to which all of this has been an answer is, could I study one thing and then get a completely different job? And you've answered it, so you've done it backwards. Everything you've said about play, have fun, listen, be interested, be kind, everything answers that question. Could I get, could I study one thing and then get a completely different job? Yes. And yes. the way you do it, listen, be interested, be kind, play and have fun. To show you the appendix very quickly. Uh, I gave them a list of like non-exhaustive list of stuff to everything they could look and read and like I don't that. I've read any of those. Oh, I have read one. Uh, play. Wait, but I was why like, well, is, wait, but why is great. Wait, but why is fantastic. Uh, I need to read a lot more. I, I, I anyway. Cards, some, cards against humanity. Yeah. Some, some play examples. The solution to the word grid and all the words that were in it. Mm -hmm. There are fifty words in total, but also more words because like it just came together that way. Yeah. And the whole point at the end is context is decisive. So the yeah. objective I gave you at the beginning, but the context was COVID, Black Lives Matter, and a little bit of pride at the end. And that links to what we were talking about last week. As much as, because I had some feedback about last week, one of, one of my students said, uh, he listened to the first 20 minutes, and he was like, oh, this feels like a whole Illuminati confirmed thing. And Illuminati confirmed thing? What? Have you not heard that phrase? No, I don't know. Really? I mean, I know okay. about the Illuminati. I don't really, I didn't yeah, really get that particular sentence. Ill Illuminati confirmed was the whole thing that went around, I don't know how many years ago it was. But it was like everything is being controlled by, you know, like this big super duper whatever. And the every everything that could came up in a lesson, sometimes when I would talk about the empire or whatever, it was like, oh, Illuminati confirmed, oh, everything's controlled. And that's what the students would say. So he was listening to last week and he said that, oh, this just doesn't seem like a lot of a lot of stuff that's about decision making and careers and all the pressure that he was experiencing it seems like a whole bunch of illuminati confirmed stuff and but it's the context the context within which young people are applying for jobs and looking to make sense of the world and understand who they are is exactly that last slide you showed and i quite like what's happened here with you've gone through your presentation and we've answered this question and i really 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 like what you said at the end about I can't even remember it, but it was like, be kind, listen, have fun, play or something, whatever you had it. I think that, again, that's the profound thing you said for today. But just checking in, and I know we've gone on like a lot more than an hour last, like last week and, and just some of my technical glitches, but the student you mentioned said the conversation, the conversation did not, didn't work for him. He didn't like, he was hoping for what more practical things. Is that what it is? Well, what it was that uh, we were talking and he was saying he's really dealing with how do I, he's, he's experiencing pressure to know what he wants to do for the future and he doesn't yeah. know what he wants to do and yeah. like he's like finding it hard to focus and study and all of that yeah. kind of stuff. And, I, and then I shared with him the link to the last, last week's episode mm -hmm. and then he said he listened to about 20 minutes and that's when he said, oh, this just, this just seems like everywhere will be controlled thing, Illuminati confirmed thing. I 
haven't got any comments from him to find out if he listened to the whole thing or what. And I will find out. But I think that the idea of the context is something that younger people miss. They, yeah. don't, they miss that whole thing. This is the not just younger people, by the way, everybody, <laughs> myself well, yeah. included sometimes. <laughs> and at the same time, I'd love if, I mean, if your students listening to this or if you check in with them, I would love to have like to double check and be able to circle back on answering anything that is missing for them. Me too. But one too. part may know. well be that they haven't listened to the whole conversation. Yeah. Could be. Uh, and, and make sure that, I mean, as I said at the beginning, if you have questions, any questions for us, not just about careers or jobs, for the future of this show, send them over to James. Yeah. Yeah, you can send them to me on Twitter at change 276 Literally any questions. Yeah. Just the, and, um, the vast, and don't forget, the whole thing is called teaching tangents. The whole point is we go on tangents. So sometimes it might not be satisfactory, but the times when it's not satisfactory, don't forget, you can also ask Google your question to have a more pragmatic approach. It's true. Because we could always Google it for you, but it's not really that, I mean, that's not a good use of my time, I'm but sorry. But there's, there's, gen there's genius in the tangents. Discovering and, link and making the links yourself between our tangents and the question, that's where yeah. the fun is, and that's what will develop your thinking. And we're all learning. I'm learning as much from Willem as we are from everybody and from my students, and that's kind of the point of this whole thing, is to explore and learn yeah. and see where we end up. Great. That's a great way to end. Thank you. Yeah, there you go.